Welcome to our sixth Wonder Space journey, where for a few minutes once a week, we orbit around life-giving wonders and stories of hopefulness. Joining us in a few minutes from this virtual window seat 250 miles above Earth will be Mohammed Mahison from Jordan, who will be answering the six questions that we ask all of our guests. But we start with a one minute wonder that this week zooms into one of the most important movement of particles anywhere on Earth. Every year, particles of dust are picked up from a vast ancient lake bed in Chad and travel 5,000 miles to South America, where most of the dust settles on the floor of the Amazon rainforest. The wonder is that this dust, taken from the lake bed in Africa, is loaded with phosphorus and iron, which are essential nutrients for plant growth. Scientists estimate that around 22,000 tonnes of phosphorus found in the Saharan dust reaches the Amazon soils every year, which is a similar amount lost every year from rain and flooding. This is interdependence on a grand scale, a redundant lake bed in Africa providing vital nutrition for the Amazon rainforest 5,000 miles away that amongst many things helps cool the planet and stabilizes rainfall cycles in South America as we heard last week from Maria Emilia in Chile. Wonder is happening every day all around us. The rhythms and patterns of sunrise and tides and crescent moons and migrating birds and tons of dust providing life and nutrition. The wonders of photography and film and scientists and artists and academics working collaboratively to create sustainable innovations with all kinds of fabrics and materials. Amongst the challenges, there is so much to lift our eyes and our spirits at this time. From this virtual window seat, we are joined this week by Mohammed Mahison, and we start by asking which city or country he would like us to fly over and why. A place that I would love to, to go back to or fly above significant to me actually would be Pakistan. To be more particular, uh, Islamabad. It's a country that I spent four years and a half in, you know, documenting stories in. And when I left, I felt I didn't give enough justice to the story and to the people there. Before going to Pakistan, I was a little bit nervous. I had this image of this place that I judged from the cover. But the moment I, I got into the country, I was amazed from the people, the hospitality, the kindness, how I was embraced by the people. I was treated very kindly. And also I found a lot of untold stories that the world needs to, to know, need to hear about it. And this is where actually I believe I became a better photographer. After 10 years of being a professional photographer, I thought I'm in a level where I'm a fine photographer. But the moment I arrived to Pakistan, I learned everything again. So this country has a special spot in my heart. The only thing you hear about Pakistan is tension, uh, violence uh, uh, stereotype and I had this uh, the same image in my head but the moment I went in everything changed so that's where I learned never to judge from the cover always give anything a chance to know it better my life story or I, I call it my journey actually began when I was a very young boy I was around nine years old and I met my grandmother's Polaroid. This magical box that when you press a button, a piece of paper comes out 
and we keep with us our whole life became my my hobby, my passion. I fell in love with photography. I was born and raised in Jerusalem um, amid the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. So news was everything surrounding me. Um, I decided to study journalism to combine my passion with my education and be a better storyteller. I started traveling the world. I went from conflict to another, from war to another. And in the middle of that journey, I realized this is not exactly what I want to do. I want to make a difference. So I started to focus on people. I started to focus on the voiceless one, untold stories. And I wanted to share it with the world. And nowadays, in 2020, I managed through photography to make a foundation that makes a difference, that helps refugees, local communities, internally displaced people in different parts of the world. I'm a National Geographic photographer, and I'm proudly the chairman and the founder of Everyday Refugees Foundation, where simply through passion, through photography, we managed to make a difference. I mean, I began as a young boy who wanted to do art photography. I fell in love with nature, with colors, with the surroundings, but the environment shaped my path, put me on the road to cover conflicts photography, which was important to document, to share with the world what's happening around them. But also I realized in the middle of this journey that there's a lot to be done by using this passion in a way to make a difference. Big or small, at least we start somewhere. It's usually a very classic answer where my heart is, which is Amsterdam. I love this city. It's a place where I get recharged. Whenever I, I cover a story or I travel around the world, I come back to cycle around the canals, to walk with my camera, to show the beauty of our world through pictures. At the end of the day, we are all humans, you know? So whatever we meet through this journey, we have to put it out in a different way. And for me, it's a true capturing pictures. But this is different kind of picture, pictures of, of hope, a picture of beauty that reminds us how beautiful our planet is. And Amsterdam is one of those cities that I always land back to, just to, to feel relaxed. You know, it's a therapy for me cycling and walking around the water. There is a place that I always end back to. It's the ancient city of Petra in Jordan. This historical, mystical city that I've visited actually many times and every time that I step in, I see something new. It's just a reminder, we are very small in these historical places. History lies above and beneath this place, the energy of this place, uh, the feelings you get when you walk in. It's like civilization where there are tens of thousands of years ago and it's and we're in 2020, we hardly can compete with. So the ancient city of Petra in Jordan is a wonder by itself and it's a place of motivation for me. Whatever I walk in, I believe that there is nothing impossible. We all can make a difference. So simply, in 2015, you know, I was covering the refugee crisis in Europe and I started to receive a lot of messages from people in different parts of the world, how we can help. And there was only one way for me is to create a foundation. And this foundation right now is run by a passionate, talented people from different parts of the world who believe in making a difference is the best way to create a change. So to be honest with you, Everyday Refugees Foundation right now it's a humble home where people who wants to make a difference land in and we manage to create, to ease the life of thousands of people simply through passion, through photography, through visuals, through paintings, through art. So it's just a hope that anybody who can follow their hearts and use their passion in a good way, a difference can be made. There is no better way to make a difference than believing in yourself as a person who can make a difference. I always say, if we put hand in hand, together we're stronger. And if we always wait the others to make the difference, a difference will never be made. Start with yourself. Think with others. Be the one who makes the first move. 
follow your heart and work hard. And this is where you can reach the point where everything is possible. You can see and read more about the work and vision of Mohammed at mohammedmahison.com and everydayrefugees.org. So as we prepare for re-entry, what wonder takes your breath away? What story that is not your own renews a sense of hopefulness for you? You can share this treasure online with a growing wonder space community from around the world, which can be found at ourwonder.space. I want to thank Mohammed for joining us in this virtual window seat. And I look forward to sharing this view with you again next week at the next wonder space. I leave you with five moments in time, captured and chosen for us by Mohammed Mahison.